God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. O oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hello, welcome to our online worship once more. My name is Derek and it's great that you, you are able to join us for this time of worship together. Uh, before we begin to worship though, um, we have a notice for you uh, and it's about our upcoming Lent course which we are going to be running uh, commencing in March on the 8th and the 9th of March. So without further ado, let me share that notice with you and then we'll begin our worship together. We'll be joining together and sharing in a Lent course this year. It's the prayer course, Unanswered Prayer, um, featuring Pete Gregg. And we're going to be running it on Tuesdays in person uh, at two o'clock in the afternoon at Christ Church in the worship room. And it will also be on Tuesdays at 7.30 in the evening via Zoom. And then on Wednesdays, again in person uh, at 7.30 at Bankside Lane in Bakeup. Um, the course is over five sessions and the first week it commences on the 8th, Tuesday the 8th and Wednesday the 9th of March. So if you're interested in joining in the course you've got some options there to choose from and if, you're if you want more details then please do email Janet, her email address is there, rev.janet10 at hotmail.com and uh, we'll put that email address in the titles for the video as well. The Word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. So in the silence, we confess our sins in penitence and faith. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, Bring us his pardon and his peace, now and for ever. Amen. What love could remember no wrongs we have done? Omniscience all knowing he counts not their sum. Thrown in to a sea without bottom or shore Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more Praise the Lord, His mercy is more As we constantly roam What Father so tender Is calling us home He welcomes the weakest The vilest, the poor Our sins, they are many His mercy is more Praise the Lord His mercy is more
he lavished on us His blood was the payment, his life was the cost We stood neath the dead we could never afford Our sins, they are many, his mercy is born Praise the Lord, his mercy is born A reading from Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. The commissioning of the disciples. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. When we think about our own discipleship and God's commission to make more disciples, disciples making disciples, it sometimes leaves us feeling uh, uncomfortable. We sometimes feel as if we're being taken out of our comfort zone and therefore we'd, we'd rather remain where we are and things to continue as they've always been. And so to help us sort of reflect on that, we're going to listen to uh, a story now, a wisdom story, and it's the adventures of the Puddlefish. Adventures of a Puddlefish There was once a big tree growing beside the river. Every year after the wet season, a puddle would get left behind in the hollow formed by the tree's roots. And every year a small school of puddlefish would settle in this puddle. There they spent all their time swimming in circles trying to catch water bugs and fighting over what they caught. Then one day there was a huge splash and a brightly coloured rainbow fish flopped into the puddle after leaping out of the river below. The puddle fish, shocked by this new arrival, all huddled at the side of the pool and waited, carefully observing the newcomer. The big fish seemed to glow with iridescence and he was smiling. One bold puddlefish made a move towards him. Who are you? Where are you from? he asked. I come from the ocean, came the reply. What is ocean? the puddlefish asked. Well, said the rainbow fish, ocean is... ocean is... it's what we're made for. It goes on forever. It's full of so many wonderful creatures. It's brimming with movement and life. How do you get there? asked the puddlefish, eager to discover this new wonder. You just jump out of the puddle and trust the river to carry you there, the rainbow fish assured him. But it was then that the objections began to rise up from the ranks of the puddlefish. The realist fish objected. This puddle is reality. You are deluded about the ocean. The scaredy fish whimpered. 
no one would ever dare make that leap into the great unknown. The political fish proposed, both sides of the argument have merit. We should form a discussion group and talk it through. Talking won't get you to the ocean, the rainbow fish warn them gently. And summer is coming. Soon this little puddle will dry up and then what? Eventually, the visiting fish leapt back into the river and swam away. And very tentatively, a few brave puddlefish also took the leap of faith. The others gazed after them with pity and went back to swimming round in circles, hunting for water bugs and fighting over what they caught. A reading from Acts chapter 1 verses 1 to 9. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. We're continuing today in our mini-sermon series on discipleship by reflecting upon the process of disciples making disciples something which in the church we refer to as evangelism. It's quite simple really in so much that we as Christians, as disciples of Christ, followers of Jesus, we can recognise and appreciate ourselves what it means to have a living relationship with Jesus, to know the love of Jesus and experience the many blessings that that brings into our lives. I don't know if you ever stopped to reflect upon this, but ask yourself the question, what would your life be like if you didn't have that love for Jesus? If you didn't have your Christian faith, if you weren't part of God's family, whether it be here at Christ Church and Holy Trinity or elsewhere in the wider church, would it matter to you? Or would you find yourself slowly drifting away and being absorbed by the values of the world around us. You may say, well, that would never happen to me. But I'm reminded of Peter, the rock on whom Jesus said he would build his church. When he denied, he knew Jesus, not just once, but three times. Elsewhere in the gospels, we read of disciples of Jesus turning and walking away because they found his teaching too hard, too difficult. So we know, perhaps through painful experience, that the path of discipleship isn't always an easy one to tread. So as followers of Jesus, recognising how precious our relationship with him is, it follows, doesn't it, that we should want to share what we have with other people. We should be passionate about sharing the gospel, sharing the love of Jesus with our families, with our neighbours, with our work colleagues and so on, so that they too can come to know him. 
and yet we struggle, don't we? We don't find it easy. And this evangelism, this process of disciples, making disciples, is something that can sometimes fill us with fear and dread. But it shouldn't do, really. And when we read about the beginnings of the early church in the New Testament, we can see there how whilst the apostles and the early members of the church were flesh and blood, just like you and I, they were often empowered by the Holy Spirit. And it's that aspect of evangelism that we often overlook. It's in prayer and inviting the Holy Spirit to help us in our discipleship, in making more disciples that makes the difference. But in the first instance, we need to reflect upon whose idea it was in the first place that we are to evangelise. Who says that disciples are to make disciples? Well, of course, it was Jesus, wasn't it? And we see that in our reading that we heard from Matthew's Gospel, where Jesus gives what we now refer to as the Great Commission. The risen Lord Jesus meets with his disciples in Galilee on the mountain and he tells them that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. And then he commissions them with these words. Matthew 28 verses 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Stephen Croft, the current Bishop of Oxford, once said, if ever a single verse from Scripture could be said to have shaped the history of the world, then this is the one. There are four aspects, I think, within the Great Commission, aren't there? To go, to make disciples of all nations, to baptise in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and to teach, to go, make disciples, baptise and teach. And when you look at it, the overriding commission is to make disciples. That's the primary purpose, I think. Yes, we can go. Yes, we can baptise. Yes, we can teach. But unless we make disciples, then the commission breaks down, doesn't it? Because it's the disciples who make disciples. And that's where the rubber hits the road, really, because discipleship is costly. And in today's society and culture where there are so many external pressures on our time and our being, very often it's our discipleship that suffers. And as church, it's key really that we make discipleship a priority in everything we do. Unless we equip people in their discipleship, how can we expect them to go and make more disciples? I read somewhere, um, somebody commenting on Matthew 16 verse 18 where Jesus says to Peter I will build my church. This person said yes it's Jesus's job to build a church and it's our job to make disciples. How often do we assume it to be the other way around? We'll build a church and we'll let Jesus make the disciples. So there we have Matthew's account of Jesus's great commission. And if we turn now to our reading from Acts, we see Luke's account of Jesus' instructions to his disciples before he ascended to heaven. They are to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. Jesus reminds them that John the Baptist baptised with water, but before long they would be baptised in the Spirit. In verse 8, Jesus tells them that they will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon them. And it's in that power that they will then be witnesses in Jerusalem and then further afield in all Judea, Judea and Samaria and then to the ends of the earth. Church leader Steve Addison summarises this well when he says, Jesus did not come to found a religious organisation. He came to found a missionary movement that would spread to the ends of the earth. Here then is the model for disciples making disciples. And we know, don't we, that when the day of Pentecost came, 
the Holy Spirit did indeed come down with great power um, upon the disciples and they were able to do some truly amazing supernatural things. Within this passage though we're also presented with an understanding of the Trinity, the unique relationship between Father, Son and Holy Spirit. When God as Father sent his Son Jesus into our world, it signalled the coming of his kingdom and through Jesus' incarnational presence and teaching, the kingdom and all its values find a home in the hearts of all believers. If Jesus had remained on earth in his physical presence, then it would have limited the spread of the gospel. But after he ascended to heaven, he would be spiritually present through the Holy Spirit, which was sent so that God could be with and within his followers. The Spirit would comfort them and guide them to know his truth, give them the right words to say and fill them with power. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, is a fundamental part of our own discipleship. The Spirit living in us says that we belong to Christ. We are children of God. We are the body of Christ together. The trouble is that all too often we ignore the power of the Spirit in us and try to do things in our own strength, don't we? And that could very well be the reason why we don't get very far. In his book, A to Z of Discipleship, Matthew Porter, an Anglican priest, says this. The reason I am a disciple today is that someone told me about Jesus. In fact, it was a number of people, starting with my parents and godparents. But I also remember hearing Dick Saunders, a travelling evangelist, tell me that if I believed in Jesus, I would receive everlasting life. I also remember Mr McConaughey, a teacher at my school who encouraged me to follow and to keep following Jesus. All these people and others too didn't keep the message of Christ to themselves, but shared it. They all took seriously Jesus' great commission to go and make disciples of all nations. I'm sure that we can each one of us reflect upon our own lives and recognise something of Matthew's story in ours when we think about those who encouraged us and led us to Jesus. And we give thanks today to God for those people. As we reflect on our own discipleship, let's always be mindful of the great commission that Jesus gave us to go and make more disciples. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be great evangelists, rather that we use the gifts that God has given us to show others the love of Christ for them in our everyday words and actions. And the one thing we can all do is pray. Pray for other people, that they would come to know Jesus for themselves. And in all of this, we look to the Holy Spirit, don't we? It's through the power of the Holy Spirit working in people's lives that transformation takes place. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, sometimes our lives are so full of worries that we forget how you look after us through every aspect of our lives. When our worries begin to spiral out of control, help us to turn them into a conversation with you, 
confident that you will calm our anxiety and give us hope for the future. Today we especially pray for any whose lives have been affected by recent storms and severe weather. Gracious God, we pray for your church throughout the world and the churches in our local communities, especially here in the Rosendale Valley. For the new Anglican Mission community in Rosendale, as our nine parishes working together, seek to build your kingdom and make new disciples. Lord Jesus Christ, you call us as you call the first disciples to follow you, not simply to believe, not simply to declare our faith and confess you as Lord, but to keep on following wherever you lead. Help us to follow you faithfully, following your example, pursuing the way of love and accepting the road of sacrifice. Help us to follow through the life of discipleship, not allowing ourselves to become distracted, not to lose heart so that we wander away from you but keeping faith to the end. Lord Jesus Christ, you call us as you call all your people to follow. Teach us what that means. and By your grace, help us to respond and to walk faithfully in your way to the glory of your name. Creator God, we pray for our Queen and her family as she reaches the 70th anniversary of her accession to the throne. Give them health and strength, wisdom and courage, so that they may carry out their many duties in the best interests of all our people. We remember too our government, praying that, always, that they would always remember that they are your servants and that your son came to serve rather than to be served. Mighty God, we pray for peace in our world. May all lands that suffer violence and injustice find peace and reconciliation. We pray for the peoples of the world and all who offer their services in the leadership of the affairs of the world, that they may uphold what is right and good. We pray particularly at this time for peace in all places where there is violence, war and terrorism, or the threat of war, praying especially for the situation with Russia and Ukraine. Father God, we thank you for the joy of human love and for all those among whom we live and work. We pray particularly for loved ones who worry us with their health or circumstances or life direction. We pray for those among our friends and families who do not know you or whose faith has been shaken. And loving God, we pray for all who bear the burdens of pain bereavement, worry and depression. We pray for those whose illness stems from anxiety. We pray that they may have an awareness of your presence and an understanding that you are bearing those burdens with them and always working towards their healing and wholeness. Merciful God, through your love and mercy, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Comfort those who grieve in their sorrow and those who are worried about how they will cope on their own and reassure them that you will never leave them to carry the burdens of life unaided. Everlasting God, we ask you to lead us into the coming week. Help us to believe that you are close by us. Keep us from making mistakes and help us never to disappoint you through our words and actions. We ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. The Collect for the Second Sunday Before Lent Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and for ever. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. In his blood, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Thank you for sharing in our worship 
hope you've enjoyed uh, your time with us and I hope that you'll be able to join us again. So as we uh, go our separate ways now, we go by sharing the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen.